In the previous video, we learned that the number of degrees of freedom of a robot is equal to the total number of freedoms of the rigid bodies minus the number of constraints on their motion. The constraints on motion often come from joints. The most common type of joint is the revolute joint. It places five constraints on the motion of the second spatial rigid body relative to the first, and therefore the second body has only one degree of freedom relative to the first body, given by the angle of the revolute joint. Another common joint with one degree of freedom is the prismatic joint, also called the linear joint. We can also have joints with more than one degree of freedom, like the universal joint, which has two degrees of freedom. The spherical joint, also called a ball and socket joint, has three degrees of freedom, the two degrees of freedom of the universal joint plus spinning about the axis. This table summarizes the previous four joints plus two other types of joints, the one degree of freedom helical joint and the two degree of freedom cylindrical joint. In the table below, we have the number of degrees of freedom of each joint or equivalently, the number of constraints between planar or spatial bodies. Using this table of freedoms and constraints provided by the joints, we can come up with a simple expression to count the degrees of freedom of most robots using our formula from chapter 2.1. Let's say the robot has n links. By historical convention, n includes ground as a link. The robot has j joints, and we define m to be the degrees of freedom of a single body. So m equals 3 for a rigid body moving in the plane, and m equals 6 for a rigid body moving in three-dimensional space. So we can write our equation in terms of these variables. n minus 1 is the number of links other than ground, and m times n minus 1 is the total number of freedoms of the bodies if they're not constrained by joints. Then we subtract off the constraints provided by the j joints. Since the number of constraints provided by joint i is equal to m minus the number of freedoms allowed by joint i, we can replace ci by m minus fi and rewrite the equation like this. Rearranging once more, we get this, and this is called Grubler's formula. It assumes that the constraints provided by the joints are all independent. So let's apply Grubler's formula to a few mechanisms. The first mechanism is called a serial or open chain robot because there is a single path from ground to the end of the robot. It's called a 3R robot, meaning it has three revolute joints. This planar robot has m equals 3, n equals 4, and j equals 3, and one degree of freedom at each joint. Grubler's formula tells us 3 times 4 minus 1 minus 3 plus 3 equals 3 degrees of freedom for the 3R robot, as we would expect. The next mechanism is called a 4-bar linkage obtained by pinning the end point of the 3R robot to a particular point in the plane. This is called a closed chain mechanism because there is a closed loop formed by the links. As before, we have m equals 3 and n equals 4, but now there are four joints. Grubler's formula tells us that this mechanism has 3 times 4 minus 1 minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 1 degree of freedom. We would also predict this by the fact that the pinning the endpoint of the 3R robot to a particular XY location creates two constraints, so we can subtract two from the three freedoms of the 3R robot to see that there is one degree of freedom. The next mechanism is like the four bar, except now it adds one more link and two more joints. Grubler's formula would tell us that this mechanism has zero degrees of freedom, but that's wrong. It still has one degree of freedom, just like the four bar. The reason that Grubler's formula does not apply is that the joint constraints are not independent. Testing whether joint constraints are independent is not an easy task, and we won't pursue it further. Finally, we have a spatial closed chain mechanism called a Stewart platform. It has six legs connecting the bottom platform to the top platform, and each leg consists of a universal joint, a prismatic joint, and a spherical joint. The prismatic joints are actuated, creating motion of the top platform, as you see in the video. Each leg has two links, and adding ground and the top platform makes 14 links total. Each leg has three joints with six degrees of freedom total for a total of 18 joints with 36 total freedoms. The mechanism moves in three-dimensional space, making m equal to 6. So Grubler's formula tells us that we have 6 
times 14 minus 1 minus 18 plus 36 is equal to 6 degrees of freedom. The top platform can be moved with all 6 degrees of freedom of a rigid body. There are limits to the range of motion, of course, but these limits do not reduce the number of degrees of freedom. In the next video, we will explore another important property of a configuration space, its topology.